in practically all parts of the world. From the Alps to the Saharan Desert, there is one common feature. These tiny scavengers, fighting wars, hunting prey, building nests and ultimately succeeding. This family of insects, containing more than 16,000 species, has truly taken over the world. These are the ants. Ants are masters of adaptation. Having existed since before the T-Rex, they've been able to evolve almost perfectly to their environments. Here, in the dry Mediterranean grassland, one type of ant has grown to thrive. These are workers of the genus Mesa. Unlike most ants, these are polymorphic. This means that within the colony, there are several forms of workers, varying in size and abilities. Each one of these forms, or castes, have a specific function within their colony that is specially adapted to their habitat. These arid lands are very hard to survive in. Instead of using their energy to hunt down the limited and difficult prey, Mesa have found a new source of food. They spend their time in search of seeds. They eat a variety of seeds from all plant types. The quantity and weight of the seeds that they eat is determined by the size of the workers. Colonies with more majors, or larger workers, generally predate larger seeds and colonies with less majors tend to predate smaller seeds. In fact, these ants are able to evaluate the efficiency of their predation, weighing up the size of the seed with the energy it will require to obtain and finding the best compromise. For most ants, the limiting factor on species coexistence is food. There is only so much of the same resource in an environment so only so many colonies can exist. But because of Mesa's unique feeding habits, their resources are plentiful and food has been shown not to be a limiting factor. However, whilst seed predation does allow Mesa to be picky in an environment with difficult prey, it isn't all easy. There is quite a process to obtain the important sugars and protein from the seeds. They mostly obtain their food from the ground where they have fallen, but sometimes the major workers will use their strong, large mandibles to remove seeds directly from the plants. Once seeds have been collected, these ants form trails many meters long from the bushes and shrubs that supply their food all the way to their nests. They wind in and out between rocks, with the larger, major workers carrying most of the seeds, and the smaller, minor workers guarding the very important trail. Although the majors may look strong, they are large and clumsy. If matched against workers from smaller ant species, they will likely be overpowered and eaten. This is why the protection from minor workers is so essential. Whilst this trail may not look special, it is formed through chemical democracy. A battle of pheromone signals that establishes the most efficient foraging site using collective decision making. Here you can see the process of foraging for seeds over two hours. From a lone worker discovering the food, to three fairly distinct trails being formed.
when these plant goods have made it to the nest. Sometimes, after tens of meters of trail, there is still quite a process to come. The majors now crush the seeds. Their large heads are full of muscle which allows them to break open the seed casings. Then, the smaller majors, sometimes known as media, and the normal, minor workers will mush up the seed insides, creating an almost paste-like substance, often referred to as ant bread. This is then stored in the nest, or eaten. These ants have been able to create their own source of proteins and carbohydrates, which can be made at any time using their stored seeds. This allows them to have constant access to food and water, even during drought, when many species don't. Whilst this is the territory that us humans are comfortable with, to most animals, the urban environment is incredibly challenging. Pollution, limited habitat, and the constant changing nature of it means many ants can't survive here. But one genus has become the master of the urban world. To survive in the human domain, these ants have to be resilient. They can nest almost anywhere, under paving slabs, in cracks in the pavement, and in the walls of your shed. Here, a colony of Laceus niger has built their nest under a stone. They have done this to absorb the sun's heat, which will speed up the development of their brood, or young. As I lift up the stone, they go into defense mode. Alarm pheromones are triggered so that the whole colony knows they're in danger, even if just a few workers sense the original threat. The workers run around, mandibles ready to attack any predator that enters their nest. Their first mission is to defend the brood, and it is a mission they would die for. Not only are these the next generation of worker, but at this time of year, there is also the larger brood that will become reproductive winged ants, which are essential to passing on the genes of the colony. They put up a good fight, covering the nest's perimeter and taking down any unfortunate guest that crosses into their path. In just a few seconds, they have managed to move all of their brood back into the depths of dirt below the surface. In an environment that can change so rapidly, it is important that these ants are able to change rapidly also. They often have to move nests due to disturbance creating a totally new living system, stretching meters underground in just a few hours. It is resilience like this that makes Laceus able to survive here. Traditionally, these ants are farmers of livestock. They care for aphids, small, sap-sucking insects commonly called greenfly and blackfly. The ants protect these aphids from predators and move them to better grazing sites when the sap of one stalk is running low. Normally, when ants are not present, the aphids will lift up their hind legs, wiggle them in the air, and pop. Out comes their sugary waste.
However, when ants are tending them, the aphids do this differently. They don't raise their legs, but instead wait until an ant comes along. The ant will then use its antennae to massage the aphid until it relaxes and slowly releases some of the honeydew, which is then eaten by the ant. This symbiotic relationship is incredible. In exchange for protection and care, the aphids give the ants a source of sugars and other nutrients. This relationship is actually very similar to that of humans and cattle. We get their milk in exchange for protection and good grazing spots. In fact, in some cases, the ants will not just use their aphids for honeydew, but will also kill and eat some of them. It is amazing to think that these tiny creatures were able to evolve to farm before humans even came into existence. However, as humans are taking over more of the world, there are less places for aphids to grow. Some colonies of Laceus have no access to aphids, so have become opportunistic scavengers, foraging until they find suitable prey, generally smaller insects, to kill and eat. They have also begun to eat human scraps. A tossed apple core or dropped burger is a massive amount of food for a colony of Laceus. In urban places like this, Laceus have had to massively diversify their diets, moving away from farming aphids. Not only have these ants had to adapt their nesting and their food, they've also had to change their whole communication system. In these concrete habitats, Laceus have evolved to rely less heavily on chemical communication, as this system is highly disturbed by the pollution of human activity. Rather than depending on chemical trails, these ants have evolved much stronger navigational memories, relying on stable landmarks, therefore reducing the effects of the constantly changing world around them. Traditionally, they would isolate their foraging to specific, stable territories, but now they are more likely to spread out, meaning they can exploit much larger but patchier areas, compensating for the instability in this habitat. The use of pheromone communication is one of the things that makes ants so special. But this genus is learning to move away from it to survive in the new humanized world. Whilst Mesor are more interesting with their distinct polymorphism, strong chemical trails and unique feeding habits, Laceus have shown us that specific adaptations may not be the way forwards. This genus is spreading across the world. Their simplicity, resilience and ability to adapt to all kinds of unexpected changes are allowing them to thrive in an incredibly hostile environment, the human environment.